look like you're feeling better. Yeah, you seem like you're feeling better. Hi everyone. Welcome back to Novel Idea. My name is Dia and this is Poppy. <laughs> Today I would just like to do a little book haul. So uh, we were gone this past week and we had gone to um, Montana two weeks ago. Um, both of those were for work trips and I picked up some things while we were on those trips. And so I would just like to show you what I got. So let's just get right into it, shall we? It's not gonna work. Nope. Oh, oh no, no. The sun is at kind of a weird angle with everything, so I am sorry if uh, the lighting is shifting and changing, but I wanted to go through these. So, um, the first ones that I will show you are ones that you've actually already heard me talk about. I've already read them. Excuse Poppy while she gets a drink of water. First one is Eric, uh, Terry Pratchett's Eric, and I read this for Faustathon, and it is about a man on Discworld who is a, what do they call him? a demonology hacker <laughs> and he has three wishes and those wishes are to be immortal to have the most beautiful woman in the world by his side and um, to and to fall madly in love with him and then of course to rule the world and so instead of summoning up a uh, tractable demon he ends up summoning up a very inept wizard and some of the little accoutrement that goes along with that wizard and the antics ensue so that is terry pratchett's eric it is one of the Discworld books but as with a lot of the Discworld books, they can be read individually without <laughs> puppy. Rick, Terry Pratchett. So that was the first one that I got. It's a little old, says Vista paperback. I'd never even heard of Vista. But yeah, I like it. I like this cover. I think it's really neat. You've heard me talk about the elegance of a hedgehog several times on this channel. It's one of my very favorite books and I did not own a copy of it. And I found this one that's in near perfect condition, deckled edges, French flaps. This to me is a story of friendship. And that friendship is very unlikely and it is very heartwarming. And this is a very slow moving book, but it's so beautiful. And the friendships that are formed in here are ones that just cling to your heart. You just don't get rid of them after you're done reading the book. So I love this. This is uh, uh, translated from French and takes place in a French it's not a hotel, but it is like apartment. And one of the characters in the book is like the concierge of the hotel or the apartments. And it has a little bit of class system in it. It has a little bit of um, not judging a book by its cover, although it's not the book, so to speak, that I'm talking about. and. It also has to do with just life and questions and family and just so many things and it does it so well and it's just so good. I love this book. Okay. Then you also heard me talk about Cold Mountain. I am going to read this one uh, when it gets cold. <laughs> um, and this was actually recommended to me by Alana Estelle and I can't wait to read it because she says it's just absolutely gorgeous writing 
and uh, also about family. And so I will be reading that one soon. And then right now, you just heard me mention this on uh, my wrap up for August as the first book I'm going to be reading this month, and that is Children of Time. You can see right now that I'm over halfway through, and I've been reading this since yesterday. It's a very quick read, and I'm in thoroughly enjoying reading this with Sandy from Miss Reads A Lot, and it's my first buddy read with her. It's just so much fun, you guys. This is a my fourth Adrian Tchaikovsky book, and I am enjoying his science fiction much more than his fantasy. And it's it's a fascinating premise. So this is about um, the end of humanity, and or the end of the earth anyway, and um, the humanity that tries to save itself and what happened thousands of years earlier in them trying to terraform another planet and uh, everything that went wrong with that. And that's about where I am right now in the book is just um, all of the things that have gone wrong on all of those levels through throughout time. And it happens to have giant spiders in it as well. Now we're into books that, as far as I know, I haven't told you anything about. So I'm just gonna go through them. Um, I don't know a lot about some of these, but what I do know, I will tell you about. All right. So the first one was kind of a big surprise for me. I was going through something, I don't even remember what it was, but I found out about an Ellen Montgomery novel that. I'd never read, I didn't know anything about, and that is Magic for Marigold. And so um, I was thrilled when I did find this and thrilled to pick it up, and I will be reading it very soon. Uh, I really enjoy Ellen Montgomery's writing, and I am so surprised that there was a novel I knew nothing about. So very much looking forward to that one. I picked this one up for my husband. <laughs> And that is Gonzaga Hardwood. This is um, a basketball team that we have followed for many, many years, very close to where my husband was born and raised. And uh, we have been to see them play several times and uh, we have really followed them since the current coach, Mark Few, who um, has a big part in this book. And, uh, he even writes the foreword of the book. And so this is just kind of about his years coaching Gonzaga Bulldogs. So I love nature writing and I love um, especially British nature writing. <laughs> this book is by someone that I have read quite a few, I think three other books nature related by her and that is Melissa Harrison and this is rain and it's just about walking in English weather and I love rain I love storms I love gray and I live on the wrong side of uh, Washington State in order to experience much of the gray and the rain but what I get of it is enough probably anyway I just love it so I'm looking forward to reading this probably more towards springtime when it's more appropriate. Um, the next one is a children's book and that is William Blake. And so I got William Blake's in and you can see that this was an award winner and, and, and an honor book. 1980 is when it was published. So that's the year that it probably won. It's illustrated by Alice and Martin Provenson and it's really cute, really fun illustrations. So I picked that one up and this is more for me than it is for my grandkids, although I'm sure that they'll use it at some point too. 
And then I found this cutie and I couldn't leave him on the shelf. And I've never seen it and I've never read anything about it, but it is Dewey the Library Cat. <laughs> this is by uh, Vicki Myron with Brett Witter. It's about a very small town library cat that changed a lot of people's lives. How can you say no to that face? Um, this one I picked up because I didn't even know that it was a book. And uh, it looks to me like it's actually a long form poem, maybe. Um, it is written, you can see, got the way that it is written, it looks like it's poetry, verses. And that is The Man from Snowy River. And this is by Banjo Patterson, or Paterson maybe, because it's only got one T. And I, I had no idea that Man from Snowy River was a book. So I'm really looking forward to that. This one I picked up as a result of Alexandra from uh, Ritual and Reading. And uh, I had just picked up a book, a different book by this author. And um, she was going to be reading it for summertime for her vacation, for her holiday. And I was not going to be getting mine in time for that, but I did get one in time for winter reading. And that is Snowball Oranges. This is by Peter Kerr. And this is about being on the island of Mallorca and, uh, and their life on the island throughout the year. And so there's a book for summer, fall, winter, and spring. And I got winter so that I could read it this winter. Okay, continuing on, I have Ring of Bright Water. This is the story about a boy I don't know how young he is in, at the beginning of the book, but this is about a boy who forms a friendship with a river otter. And so it's by Gavin Maxwell. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I actually read this when I was much younger, but I don't remember a whole lot about it. I'm looking forward to reading it again. And then, you know, my obsession right now with Gabrielle Roy. And again, I found another book that by her that I've never heard of. And it appears to be a children's book. And that is the pe the, or the tortoise shell in the Pekingese. And our dog that we had before Poppy was a Peaky. And she was wonderful. But I love um, Gabrielle Roy's writing and so I'm really interested to find out uh, how she writes a children's book as well. It's not a very big book and it does have illustrations by uh, Jean-Yves Ahern. You can see just different different little illustrations in it. I just love it. And then I picked up one that is for a uh, readathon that I am doing for Chantel Reads All Day, her channel. She is doing a You've Got Mail a thon. And so one of the things that she put on the prompts for the readathon was the um, to read one of the shoe books by Noel Stratfield and I got ballet shoes. So uh, again I have read this before but I don't remember anything about it. Um, I do remember liking it. But that's it. All right and then this one is Camilla's fault. So Camilla over at HG Books is someone that 
I have gotten some really good recommendations from as I have gone along on booktube and um, I expect this one to be just delightful as well and she read it in French so I was thankful <laughs> that she translated the title for me and that is this little book do you see it it's so cute and this is the story of a seagull and the cat who taught her to fly and this is by Luis Sepulveda. And it's translated from the Spanish by Margaret Sayers Peden with illustrations by Chris Sheban. And that's all on the back. Isn't this just the cutest book? So um, it's about a seagull who dies in the cat's backyard and asks the cat to please raise her little hatchling and teach her to fly. <laughs> it's just right up my alley. <laughs> okay, and then this is a book that I've been waiting a long time for and this was a recommendation from Leslie over at the Nerdy Narrative and um, and I did, I waited and waited and waited to get this copy. And then when I got it, the dust jacket was severely damaged, um, but I didn't, wanna, I didn't wanna wait any longer <laughs> for a book. And so I didn't send it back. Um, you can see that the edges are a little eaten up and it kinda got I don't know if you can see it, kind of got creased up back here a little bit, but that is An Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors by Curtis Craddock. And I am so excited about being able to read this. And uh, she has had nothing but good things to say. It's, uh, it's a fantasy and um, yeah, I don't know anything more about it. I don't want to know anything more about it. I am going in blind and I am going to give it my uh, honest opinion when I am done. So I'm looking forward to this one also. All right, guys, we're on the last of them. So last ones. Remember when I hauled this book? and told you how much I love her books in general. And uh, I got this one, which is called An Inspired Traveler's Guide. And I actually just wrapped this up in my August, um, last video for August. And I loved this. I thought it was excellent. Thought it was beautifully done. Amy's uh, illustrations are just gorgeous. Sarah's writing is gorgeous. It's a good combination. So, I also picked up Hidden Places, also Inspired Traveler's Guide. And I picked up Magical Places, also Inspired Traveler's Guide. And I picked up Spiritual Places, also Inspired Traveler's Guide. So this one is illustrated by Harry and Zena Goldshock, Goldhawk, sorry, Gary and Zena Goldhawk. And you can see that it's a little shiny. <laughs> Isn't it so pretty? And this one goes through all sorts of places around the world that are supposed to be a real tonic for your soul so that's spiritual places and then mystical places could almost be called mythical places because they go she goes over places like xanadu and shangri-la and the city of elves and just different places like that and this one is also illustrated by Amy Grimes, who's the one that illustrated uh, literary places. 
And then Hidden Places, also illustrated by Amy, takes you kind of off the beaten path and um, maybe even underground, those kinds of things, hidden places. So I know that there is kind of one more out in this inspired um, places, in inspired travelers guide, and that is wild places. And I don't have that one yet. I have this one. I'm excited about it. So I have some other things to read. I think I'm going to pick up spiritual places for um, the autumn. That will be that. Okay, you guys, let's see if I can do a book stack. Can I get them all in there? I don't know. There you go, you guys. <laughs> so that is it. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that little book haul. I am looking forward to reading these. So thanks for coming by the channel, you guys. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.